A storm breaks and Miklos is able to escape his pursuers. After traveling across the land on foot for three days, he reaches the outskirts of Pest. In a cemetery on the edge of the city, he notices a widow mourning by one of the graves. She tells him that a Czech knight has been defeating Hungarian knights one after the other in jousting tournaments. Her two sons both fell victim to him. Miklos swears that he will defeat the Czech and then continues on his way to the city. Meanwhile, György asks the king for an audience. His intention is to cheat his younger brother out of his rank and property. The king receives György, but his son sees through his greedy scheme. He offers him Miklós's wealth if he can defeat the Czech knight. György, however, is too much of a coward to accept this challenge and leaves in haste. In the meantime, darkness falls and Miklós is still wandering the streets of Pest. Suddenly, he comes across a big commotion. People are running through the streets, chased by a bull that has gotten out of control. Miklos steps in front of the furious animal and stops it by grabbing it by the horns, making it possible to immobilize it. Even though Miklos has done a great service for the people, no one says thank you or offers him accommodation for the night. For taking down the bull, he is only thrown a few pieces of liver. Of course, Miklos refuses to pick it up and sadly continues his way. He decides to return to the cemetery in the hope of finding the woman who was grieving her sons. He wants to ask her for her son's weapon so that he can defeat the Czech knight. He doesn't find the woman and, with a heavy heart, decides to spend the night at the cemetery. He falls asleep. In his dream, he defeats the Czech knight and the king pardons him for his sin. Suddenly, he is awakened by the sound of horses. It is his servant Benze who arrives, who has brought him a loaf of home-baked bread. It turns out that his mother has hidden 100 gold coins in it. Miklós is pleased and relieved, as now he will be able to buy weapons, armor and a horse to fight against the Czech knight. But first, he and Benze spend one gold coin in a tavern. Miklós dines for three people and drinks a jug of wine. It is late, but the cymbal player also joins in and plays music to add to the enjoyment of their feast. Miklos dances and drinks all night, letting go of all the troubles and sadness of the past few days. At dawn, he rows across the Danube to Buddha to get a horse, weapons and armor. Dressed for battle, he mounts his steed and sets out for the king's camp.
A huge crowd has gathered around the king's tent. Everybody is curious to see who will be the Czech's next challenger. György is also present in the king's entourage. Then Miklós, whose identity is not revealed at this point, and the Czech knight rode to the island, one from the Buddha side, the other from Pest. The Czech knight offers to shake his opponent's hand, but he is wearing an iron glove and is trying to trick Miklós. Miklós sees through the ploy. He gathers all his strength and crushes his opponent's fingers with his bare hand. The Czech knight surrenders, but then he tries to strike Miklós from behind. Before he can do so, Miklós slays him without mercy. The king sends a finely decorated raft for the victorious Miklós. When he is escorted to the king, Miklós finally lifts his helmet. Dirt hangs his head in shame. By now the king knows all of his devious ploys and pronounces judgment on him. Dirt must first voluntarily renounce his share of the estate in favor of Miklós. Then he is banished from the royal court forever. Miklós then declares that he has no claim to his brother's estate, not even to his own. All he asks is that the king takes him into his army as a private soldier. The king fulfills Miklós's request. But instead of appointing him to be a private, he is commissioned to be a commander and is honored with the king's sword. Miklós is happy, and he is even happier when he sees his proud mother and Denzel approaching the royal tent to greet him.